Hey, what's up? It is the Man Fuse Podcast. Kaylee here, my co-host, Ben H. What up? So today, we're going to review audio of what we believe is the last final moments of the submersible, the Titan. If you have not heard it yet, it's pretty astounding. And we'll also explore some other news headlines that are as equally as crazy in our eyes. We're shook. We're a little shook. Still. The bleak result, the devastating result of the search for the submersible, the Titan, ended up ending like most of us believed it would. Not great. Not great. Well, they all died. So if but, you consider that uh, not but, a good... Oh. Yeah, that's the worst. I mean, but I think it's interesting. All I could think of was like five sweaty dudes <laughs> like rolling around in their own feces for five days gasping for air. Right. And speaking their regrets of their life. Yeah, yeah. And spewing that amongst the other four people. <laughs> yeah. You know, and why? Hoping, hoping to get rescued off of the bottom of the seafloor. But turns out that wasn't the case because actually what happened was was the sub imploded and there was a lot of speculation about this sub from people who were in the game sub people that knew the deal a lot of people didn't like the way this thing was built you're not supposed to build a sub with titanium and carbon fiber i do find it interesting that they had made it down there safely like 30 times or numerous something. numerous times over 44 people had successfully yeah gone on that voyage yeah which is you know they must be thanking their lucky stars jesus christ right now or what about the did you see the youtuber that attempted to go on it that him and his girlfriend were in the water like and he had videoed it like they had videoed their voyage onto the big boat and, wow. and the seas were really rough and then they went down they started to go down and then determined that the seas were just too rough wow. and ended up coming out wow. it was the voyage before this one the one right before the one right before Which, i know i don't know that could have been gone months. all the way down then they would have got clip out maybe so i mean what kind of like sign does that do you look at that and go holy shit well, you know, apparently this area of the ocean is highly monitored with sonar buoys, and there's active monitoring of the ocean with submarines, and this is a very active area, uh, international waters. Now, I have a question real quick. Yeah. How deep can a submarine go? Apparently there's various different kinds, right, of submarines. But how deep can really the know. deepest submarine go? Not this deep. No, so we can't go down to the bottom of the Titanic. Like I, I don't think so. Like yeah. I don't. Think, I would imagine not. No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know much about submarines, but what I've heard is that the sonar monitoring in this area, you know, you can hear somebody banging on the side of a sub from however far well, away. Well, they have things in the water. They have planes that can like pick yeah. it up from these like. Right, which that's an active search. But, I mean, there's buoys in place that are listening all the time for subs coming through or any kind of sound. So there's the detection Boom. Uh, Boom. set up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Red October, yeah, right? the hunt. Yeah, the hunt for Red October. But so apparently the Navy had some audio of what sounded like an implosion since Sunday. And we've got that audio now. And... You know, people listening have probably heard it too. I mean, it's all I hadn't heard media. it until you, you heard it. Now I have the eerie. It's an eerie sound. And what it sounds like, the initial sound is the hull cracking. And then there's a couple seconds. And then there is the sound of the sub imploding, which is a daunting sound. And then and there's then the, the echo. And then the subsequent sounds are the echoing of that implosion off of the seafloor. And the souls just vanishing. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I wonder what they were thinking after they heard the crack. That was the last moment of their lives. Well, I wonder, like, when you played it for me a moment ago and yeah. we're about to play it. I bet it was loud. I didn't count how many seconds or milliseconds it yeah. was between the two. So if you hear crack, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. You've got about three. enough time to go, oh, oh shit. shit. Boom. And then it's over. Let's hear it. I wonder if they said, oh, shit. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> but what can we take from this? One good thing, I think we all can, you know, the idea of them sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. 
running out of air, right? praying, banging on the side of the fucking tin can they're in, yeah. suffocating, listening to the whining of each and every person right. about every regret they've ever had. Even the ones on there who maybe don't believe in God right. are now praying to God. Yeah. You know they are. And they might not have said, I acknowledge God right. for their whole lives. And now they're going, oh, God, please. Please. Please, please. Why do we do that? Like, whether you believe in God or you don't, but you get into a shitty enough situation. Yeah. You're looking to something up there for fucking help. Well, you have to. I mean, I think there's a saying that I heard the other day, and it's that your ego is not your amigo. Ah. <laughs> your ego is not your amigo. Your ego is amigo. not your amigo. I like that. And I think it's our ego that pushes us away from believing in a higher power because it's all about us. And oh, how can... I have complete and utter control right. of my life and those around me. Exactly, you know, and it's the ego, and we all have it and you need it, but ultimately... I love when people stroke it. There's <laughs> Yeah, there's no atheists on the battlefield, man. I mean, like, at our core, we all have an idea of a creator. It's just built into us. I mean, it's not something... I mean, you may be an atheist, but why? You know, but I, I feel mean, like even the atheist under the right circumstances might be going, I need help, please, somebody up there. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're definitely. Like, Unless you want to die and you don't care about dying or, you know, whatever. I mean, maybe there are those out there that wouldn't, but everyone on that ship, whether they had spoken to God recently ever or not, would be going, please, God, let them find us before we run out of air. 100%. And the idea of them dying that way yeah. was horrific. Like, yes. now granted, what you're about to play for us from up here yeah. on dry land where we have plentiful of oxygen and things aren't going to implode on us at any given moment, it's eerie as fuck. Well, you said, what did we learn? And one of the things that I did is I did an inventory of all the dumb shit I've done out of my life. And you hear more and more about, you know, a skydiving accident or recently there was a paragliding accident down in the keys where it was a woman and her two kids went up on a parasail you know the thing that they pull behind the boat you go way up and the wind was so bad that it ripped the parasail from the boat oh shit or no no that's not what it was the wind was so bad that they couldn't pull the parasail in and so the captain cut it and it drug them miles and miles until they finally hit a bridge and it killed the lady. The point is that all this tourism stuff. So the parasail that was connected to the boat. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't they just keep pulling her until they could get well, the boat keep pulling her? Why Great they question. Cut it? Captain error for sure. Why would they cut it and be like, oh, good luck? I don't know. Maybe it was pulling the boat. One person? Uh, maybe. I don't know. No, no, it's the big sail, the big parachute, the wind. Right, the ones that they put up, they attach from the boat. So and apparently they... they have like an electronic crank that pulls it back in, and the wind was pulling too strong, and the guy, for whatever reason, I mean, he was a ride. I think he's in jail now. Fuck you yeah, he I mean? should be. Um, I'd be fucking pissed. Hey, yeah. sorry the ride's over. <laughs> yeah. Your time's yeah, up. You. Oh, we can't bring her back in. Well, I'll See just cut ya. it. <laughs> I got to go home. <laughs> But anyway, wife's man, got dinner on the table. Sorry, just, guys. I think what I learned is just think twice about what you just because you're paying to do something. It doesn't mean that it's safe. And just because you have the opportunity to do something that not very many people will get to do. That's right. Doesn't mean it's safe. Now, like I had an opportunity and I've talked about it on this show before that, you know, I got to take jet skis from Alaska to Prince Rupert, British Columbia. Right. Something that very few people have ever done. Yes. Maybe a couple hundred at right. this point. While there is risk there, because yeah. when you're on a jet ski, you can't be closer to the water than right. being in the fucking water. Right. And fucking elements. Yeah. Animals. Right. Uh, nature. I mean, fucking an orca could fucking kill you in a half a second yeah. on a fucking jet ski. Yeah. I mean, a humpback whale could. Right. But there's a, a level of risk. Well, that... there's a level of measured risk where you're going, all right, I know how to ride a jet ski. What are the you chances know, of an orca coming up and singling I'm gonna be there me with out? A bunch of people. What if the, I get eaten by an orca? So be it. I mean, you know? <laughs> but what are the chances? Yeah. But if you're doing something and people ride jet skis, I mean, not to travel, but like but, skydiving, for example. What if the parachute doesn't open? You don't know who packed the parachute. You know. But if you look at the risk, chances yeah. are you're gonna be fine. Yeah, riding in an airplane. 
Right. Driving in the car, you could Driving fucking die. I mean, oh, shit. Did you hear? Speaking of, hold on one second. Did you hear? And uh, RIP and thoughts and prayers go out to the dude's family about that realtor in Peachtree Park or Garden Hills the other day. So we are based in Atlanta, Georgia, and Ben is in real estate. And there's a big company that I believe is. Uh, you talking about George Heary? The Sotheby's guy? Yeah. That got fucking crushed by a tree? I didn't realize that's how he died. When that storm, we just had this storm come through two days ago. No way. And he was walking in his neighborhood and a tree fell on him. Unbelievable. So you heard he died? Yes. I didn't hear until my wife told me yesterday. That's horrible, man. And apparently he lived in that neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And George I guess, and Fred here have the Heary and, brothers. And apparently he was a very well-known, oh, uh, he was a producer. Oh, definitely. He and his brother, they do great. And they fucking probably work that area in Buckhead, which For is sure. a very wealthy area. Yeah. Well, so the storm came through, and I was trying to get more details. I was like, because the storm came through hard. Hard. It was like, you saw these clouds coming, and it just started coming down. And I mean, I didn't see a tornado, but I feel like in downtown Atlanta and in Buckhead, you've got some really old fucking trees. Definitely. And some of these trees have probably been there for hundreds of fucking years. And I don't know why, but when I lived in East Atlanta, every time there was a storm, a tree took down a power fucking line. Yeah. And it was like, we had no fucking power. Well, I don't know if it had already started raining or if it was just a gust of wind, but... How fucking bad of luck is that? That Like, sucks, man. And my wife was like, did he not hear the tree cracking? Like, did he have headphones on and maybe he didn't hear it? Like, was he listening to something else? Was he doing 75 hard? He was like, fuck it. (laughs) I hate that for him, man. And I mean, but you think about wrong place at the wrong fucking time. That is sad. But there you go again. You're walking home. Yeah. Because you're trying to get out of the storm right. in a fucking tree in your neighborhood. Yeah. Probably one that you walk by every day. Yeah. Crushes you to death. Yeah. No doubt we live in a dangerous world and we're all going to go somehow. Whether it's through a tree or a plane or a disease or whatever it is, something's going to get us all. Or, I almost had a pipe come through my windshield yeah, you did. Oh, yeah. on 400. Final, final destination. What a story shit. that would have been. And we talked about it where I called you at the moment at it was happening. At the moment it happened. Kaylee had the intuition to ask you if you were okay. But, you know, if you're going to go to space or if you're going to go to the Titanic, why that my whole thing is why, you know, why the fuck? And one of the more sad things that I heard, too, is the guy who brought his son, his son did Did not not want to go, go. had a bad feeling about it, but he was going for his dad. Went for his dad because he didn't want to let his dad down. Did you hear about the father and son that the CEO was like trying to sell, like no. hard sell before this other father son couple came on. No. There were two spaces available, and he kept sending emails to this other well to do guy going, Hey, act now. These seats are going to be gone. Price drop. Like there were multiple emails, wow. like him going, If you do it now, I can get you in for 150K. What? And they denied it and ended up finding these other two. Right. Because you know that CEO was going through the wealthy of list of people he had in his fucking contacts. Yeah, yeah. Trying to fill those spaces. Because wow. why wouldn't you? Opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. But see, if you offered me that free opportunity to go down there before, I just don't see. Okay, you say, hey, Kaylee, you get to Cape Canaveral. You can go up, like, in the penis-shaped rocket with Blue Origin, the one that looks like a cock. Or you could go up with Elon Musk and his crew to the edge of space and come back down, whatever it was. Right. I'd fucking do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. But if you offered me the ability to go down 2,000 feet to look at the fucking rusty bow. 12,000. 13,000 feet. Yeah, two miles, right? Right. To look at the rusty bow of the Titanic through a fucking cyclops-sized hole. How much of it can you really see down there? Like, what view are you going to get? I would rather watch James Cameron's documentary. Yeah, like I can see it on TV. But out of that little hole? What are you going to see down there? You're going to see one little portion. Yeah, it's like the little door hole. It's like looking out of an anus. (laughs) Hey, it's my turn. It's my turn. Can you move? And you get to look at it on a TV screen, too. Ooh. While you're sitting there. Oh, so there was a camera on the outside. Yeah. Okay, but how much of it? It's so dark. But who cares? Who it's ca- fucking I'm not going sit in my anywhere. Living room and look at it on a TV screen. Uh, yeah, nice and comfy and safe and air, and I'm not breathing in your fart like a Dutch oven. I, I mean, 
when that thing cracked. Well, let's not waste so any anyway, more time. So anyway, here's the audio that came back. And again, the first crack, apparently, is the hull cracking. The second sound is the implosion of the submarine. And then the subsequent sounds are the echoing of the implosion off of the seafloor. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I, I got to tell you, Dude. when you played it, we didn't have headphones on. And it was, you know, just off your phone. But that having, having like, good sound in your ears and hearing nothing but that, I just got scared for yeah, a second. That was a scary sound. Was it not more scary with the headphones yeah, on? way more scary. And it's still echoing. Let's listen to it again. Let's do it. All right, we're listen, starting over. Listen close. I don't have a camera. First crack is the... And then I'm going to say, oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, my God. They had enough time to look in each other's eyes yeah. and literally say, oh, shit. And it was, it was done. done. Rest in peace. God bless them. Man, I do feel for their families. I mean, it's a tragedy nonetheless. That was a horrible, horrible sound. <laughs> That's going to haunt me, actually. I <laughs> think. Like, it's I, a haunting it sound. Should really we hear it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted now. All right, let's do it again. All right, here it comes. When we hear it, we're going to make eye contact. Oh, shit. Damn. God. And is that the echo from yeah. it? Does, does shit echo in the water? Like that? Off the loud stuff that echo off the floor. That far? Well, it was far down there. It was almost to the right. Titanic. Yeah. It's, it's fucking... Like a canyon. You know what I mean? Like when you yell into a canyon. Hello, hello, yeah. hello. All right, that's enough of that. That's <laughs> fucking crazy. Sorry if anyone's triggered from those sounds. That it's... it's that's wild. That was horrible sounds. Yeah. And picturing them in there going, what the fuck was that? And interestingly enough, like after doing those little run throughs, we got to say, oh shit. And then we got to like pause and look. They had about enough time to realize they had a problem or wonder if they had a problem. Correct. I wonder what the guy, the pilot said. I out. mean, the, your reaction time is he was that like, ain't good. But then it's done. But they didn't feel anything. When that second crack happened. That was it. They're vaporized. I yeah. mean, they're nothing. Like, yeah. your brain wouldn't even process pain. Like, they wouldn't even go, oh, I'm feeling pain. You'd be done. It would just be, just be, it'd be, be nothing. But they did have that. You'd be see, water. But after going through that, though, they had the, like, and hearing that sound, that first one, they're like, they started to get scared. Oh, they I, had the I, ability for a millisecond. You know how loud that must have been from inside the thing? I mean, just oh, the dude. crack oh, had dude. to be... Oh, if we're hearing it like that, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, imagine how loud it was from inside. Oh, just it was probably it like... Just like, crack. Oh, no, it was probably like a fucking... It was like a bomb going off. I wonder if just the sound of that crack would make their ears bleed. Potentially, I don't know, maybe... I mean, it's a lot of pressure. It's like 6,000 pounds of pressure per inch or something, maybe per square inch. Like, I don't even know what that means. It just means you get freaking vaporized. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. Probably just some blood molecules just bleep, bleep, right. bleep, bleep, bleep. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I don't even know what remnants. You just fish food. So, yeah. No. The circle of life. It's the circle of life. Back through the circle. Didn't know that the Titanic, this many years later, would claim more victims. And not only that, capture the attention and the horror of the world. I'm still shook. 
Especially now that I've heard that sound. I wonder if, and I was trying to talk to my son about this because, you know, he got to hear about it. And, right. And then, you know, it was kind of the whole world was watching for updates, you yeah. know, during their so-called rescue mission or search and recovery or whatever right. the fuck it was. And uh, I said, the only good that might come of this is if maybe this pushes us humans to ramping up almost like the space race yeah to finding better and more technology yeah to be able to safely go explore down right. there like what if this garners enough attention to where more people step up and are like I mean, there's only a few companies out there that are even spending the time money yeah. or anything to try to build anything like this right. I mean, whether his was a great design compared to James Cameron. James Cameron makes this shit. I mean, you know, the nuclear subs, I wonder how deep they go. I don't know. I think the military stuff can easily do this kind of thing. 2,000 feet? 12,000. Or 12,000 feet, sorry. I would think. I, I don't know, though. You know what I mean? Let me check. Ben is checking Dr. Google of Google Eye. A nuclear submarine can dive to a depth of about 300 meters. Which is the equivalent to? 900 feet. Pussies. 900 feet. Okay, so 1,000 feet. So that thing can't even graze the surface of where the Titanic is. No. No, it can't even go a twelfth of the way. Yeah. I mean. It's not even close. So it can go about one empire state building down yeah because i think the titanic sits at about 10 or 12 empire state buildings stacked yeah. on top of each other and so i guess that's the big fear right is like that the sub's gonna break and you just sink and you just get imploded well right but, but fortunately i think the sub's technology they're able to stay within their yeah yeah like, you know they're like, but i mean i wonder why they can go only go to a thousand feet is it because of the pressure per inch and yeah the sub I mean, would just freaking collapse and, and i mean think about how strong when you look at a sub like i've never been on one i've never seen one in person but i've seen them in movies yeah. and i've seen them on the news it's a fucking metal they're tank huge. in the yeah. water they're huge and they're fucking just geared out with all the technology fucking yeah. missiles fucking all that shit and it can only go a thousand feet yeah and if you think about a thousand feet, a thousand feet is deep. Deep. A thousand feet is high. Real deep. And real deep. high. Yeah. But me, if I was offered, I would go to space tomorrow if it was given. Ch but Elon Musk, I feel like, not saying an accident or a tragedy can't happen. But he has got his shit to a. It's probably about as safe as getting on a fucking plane. I don't know, man. I mean, he hasn't been up. You know, I mean, our buddy works for them. They're sending rockets up every fucking day. And, you know, we can only ever go to low Earth orbit. I think it's like 120,000 feet up. Well, why something. only? I mean, Did they go? Well, you, they can go far. They can go to the space station. That's where the space station is. It's all in low Earth orbit. Nothing is in space, so to speak. Well, what I about, mean, 120,000 feet is 10 miles up. Well, what so about the moon? I don't know about the moon. I that's mean, the, not lower. Well, so the moon, right, if we went to the moon, the moon would be the only time that human beings have been outside of low Earth orbit. I think it's 28,000 miles away or something like that. But other than the moon landing, human beings have not left low Earth orbit. But low Earth orbit, you know, you're still talking 100,000 feet up. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's just, who was I riding with the other day? Oh, I was riding with our buddy Jason, who's a great friend of the Manfuse podcast. Shout out to Jason. Jason Shannon. Shout out to And he's, a, he's an adv advocate. He's Jay an advocate. Jay Shan. Jay Shan. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving Jason Shannon a nickname. I just did. You gave him like Shout the, out to Jay Shan. You got the, like, case stew. That's right. Jay Law. That's right. Jay Shan. Jay Shan. Yeah. Jay Shan is, uh, he's a pimp. So, uh you know, reaching out to you. You have to be with anyway. Like but we had a business meeting the other night, and then we went out to celebrate a 40th birthday for some friends. And Jay Shan said to his wife, who was in the back seat, he was like, "If that opportunity would have been offered to me, I would have gone in a second to the and, Titanic." Mm -hmm. I was like, "You would have." He was like, "In a second, and I wouldn't have come back, obviously." But he was like, "Do you know how many people get that opportunity to do?" I mean, it's like no one ever, and that's the appeal and allure to these billionaires and these wealthy to do people is that you know 
what they thought was safe, but they get to do something right. that ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people will never get to do. You it's know? true. Uh, and so I would go to space. I that has no interest to me to go down and see a rusted piece of shit at the bottom of the fucking ocean. Even though I guess there is something to say about no one's ever done it. I mean, you know, there's a very handful of people that have, but you know, it's just I don't see the view from space. You know, even if I got to see partial view of Earth or something like that, to me that looks beautiful from the right. images I've seen. Being down in a dark fucking cavern or at the bottom of the fucking ocean to see a rusted piece of metal that split apart fucking 80 years ago or 100 years ago it just doesn't really do it for me. Well, speaking of the ocean, in other news, did you hear about the Russian tourist who got eaten by a tiger shark off the coast of Egypt? Yes. That was horrifying. Was horrifying. So here's the question, multiple choice. A or B, would you prefer to die on your way to the Titanic in a submarine implosion or get eaten alive by get eaten alive by a tiger shark? 50 feet from shore. Yeah. <laughs> With all your friends and family watching. Um, do you have to even ask yourself that question? Yeah, I'd probably go with... This Titanic. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess... But are you definitely going to die either way? Like, is that the outcome? I guess, yeah. I saw that video. It was fucked up. Real bad. Yeah. He got fucked up. And most of the time, though, shark attacks are a mistaken identity. And most of the time, sharks, even though tiger sharks are the fucking garbage disposals of the sea, like, they fucking yeah. will eat anything. A tiger shark will fuck you up. I mean, yeah, yeah, a bull shark will fuck you up. But still, most of stuff is a mistaken identity. Once they bite into you and realize you're not their favorite food, right. they normally move on. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying there's not ones out there that will fucking... Depending on how hungry they Just are. Do it for fun. Well, you might not be their favorite meal, but today they're having turkey. You know what I'm saying? Or, or today we're having bony chicken, which is what you probably are the equivalent to versus a blubbery fucking mammal. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Oh, I just realized I didn't even start the fucking video for any of this, but that's okay. That's all, all right. right. We'll just do audio anyway. Yeah. Fuck that it. was bad. Yeah, that was pretty hideous. And that made me think a lot, too, because, I mean, you know, I don't typically swim out deep in the ocean. Like, we're typically going to shallow areas to swim, you know. But, but that's dude, there's where tiger the sharks everywhere. But that's where the attacks happen. There are tiger sharks everywhere. If you think about it, most people diving that are submerged in the water yeah. are not the ones getting attacked. Yeah. Most of the people getting attacked are the ones that are half like half their body is above the water right. and they really can't see what's approaching yeah or they're at the top and the sharks are coming from the bottom and have no idea what's coming underneath them mm. but if you know if you're in the water and you're like 20 30 feet deep and you can kind of see what's going on you're not the fucking thing that's just flailing at the top of the water with right. the sun fucking lighting you most of the time, you're not getting bitten because you can see what's going on. You're under the water. Right. The time you fucking see anything, I mean, like, it's already on you. Yeah, tiger sharks will fuck you up. And bull sharks, too. Bull sharks are the, one of the most aggressive out there. Yeah. You know, great whites, they normally like, is this my food? They bite you, even though it could be very devastating because of how big they are. Right. But then they're normally gone because they're like, this ain't what I like. Where's my seal, bitch? Yeah, and that alone can... Oh, that alone could fucking kill you. Kill you. You know what I mean? The test bite. But even that. But I mean, this guy was getting toyed with. Oh, the yeah. They were slow him playing around. him. They were slow playing. He was just like, man. They were circling him. Yeah. And then you see him go under and then pop up. And then you see the fucking. I think it was just one tiger shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even that, though. I mean, how often does that happen? Like 10 or 11 a year out of all the millions yeah, of people? You don't want to be one. No. But, I mean, you don't want to be the one that fucking dies getting crushed by the tree either. Life is precious all the way around, you know? Everything we do has a risk. Right. Some calculated. You know, you could bet that when you leave to drive home, chances are you'll make it home. Yeah. But there is that small percentage of a chance that, you know. It's true. You'll get shat on by an airplane or fucking whatever. Or a pole go through your window. Right. Anyway, sorry for the morbid topics of death and destruction here well, on the Manfuse Podcast. There's just been a lot body. of stuff in the headlines. Speaking of headlines. Yeah which I was hoping death and destruction came to this one dictator. Do you want to play the audio you sent me earlier? 
Oh, sure. So I got wind the other day. I was told to my wife that something was going on with Russia. And I was like, what? And then I find out that the Wagner group, the mercenaries that Putin hired to go and fuck up Ukraine, were now making a march towards Moscow. Right. Now, I heard, what's his name? Perg- uh, Perg- per- I, went, I can't pronounce his name. Anyway. Pergosian. Pergosian the leader of the Wagner group and yes. what around 50,000 mercenaries and Yeah, troops? I mean they're basically the Wagner group as they call the it. Wagner. The Wagner. They they're like special ops and they weren't like a part of the regular army. So the Wagner group could operate in foreign areas, but I mean on a global scale these guys kick ass, right? And apparently this Pergozin guy who's the leader of the Wagner group and like one of Putin's boys for a long time thought he had the support of the oligarchs and the people of Russia to oust Putin. So what he did is he went and like 5,000 of them, I think, started to surround Moscow. Right. And then basically the rest of them ran. And the oligarchs who he thought he had support from fled the country. And then he was just left there like a dummy. You know what I'm saying? I thought Putin probably bought him off. No, he didn't have the level of support that he thought he had. Like, he thought he had the level of support that was represented. He was like, well, if I do this, it's obviously a death sentence. So you're going to be there, right? Yeah, we'll be there. And they weren't. And neither were the people. Neither was the Wagner group. Only like 5,000 of them showed up. So they never actually made the move. But the five, 6,000 people showed up. And then they were basically busted. And... I they guess. thought they were going to go checkmate him. Right, exactly. See, but I was hoping when I saw that, I was like, oh, shit, they're going to fucking get rid of Putin, which I was hoping they would. Well, so Progozin has now been exiled to Belarus. Where is that a death sentence? It's not really a death sentence. It's just that you can never come back to Russia. But Russia you, is occupies a lot of Belarus, don't they? Isn't that a Russian occupied like? I don't know. It's just that's where this guy's been exiled to. If you don't think Putin is going to have him killed in some capacity, because that right there, though, the fact that he was able to Who get. Who knows if that's even the real story. Right. But the fact that he was able to even get that close to Moscow yeah. with troops and tanks. Well, he's a military commander. Right. But I've been seeing that, you know, this just it weakens Putin yes. in a sense, because once again, you know, he thought he had support. Right. But people do support probably the removal of Putin, but probably weren't ready to say it, risk their lives yet. Yeah. But I think that, you know, just like this war has put damage and people's minds are going. I mean, think about people who have family members that are being just live sacrificed for the military. Just yeah. like you're going to die. They're not getting the food support they need. They're not getting the weapon support they need. It's just a fucking train wreck. Yeah, it's and pretty it's horrible. A, and it's a pointless war, even though, as we've talked about on this show, that Putin did give plenty of warning. You do this, I'm going to do this. Well, to me, it looks like the West is pushing a regime change. You know, like uh, they did with Saddam. Uh, but I'm kind of for it, though. I mean, mm. Russia is a fucking. But will Russia ever be an ally? But I just think that the psyops of the media. I mean, Putin never did anything to me, for example. I'm not saying they're friends. I'm not saying I got to be friends with Putin or like Putin or or what. I just say. Leave it to the people of Russia who the hell they want to be in charge. It's true. You know if what I'm saying? If they didn't want Putin in power, they could probably remove him. Yeah, why has it got to be up to the West? Like, why do I have to pay a piece of 200 bill? You know what I'm saying? It's not my circus, not my monkey. You know, RFK Jr., presidential candidate, was saying that we signed that we wouldn't do that. And yet we have been. And we ultimately pushed him into this. And now guess who's the greatest spender of the defense. So it's obvious that the West is trying to push a regime change. I just don't know if who you get is worse. And we got our own problem. That's my whole point. Why don't we fix the shit here in America? Like, why do we have to give a fuck? You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right. Why right. do I even have to care? Why don't we get some of the poor people yeah. in L.A.? Yeah. And fucking, where else is it just running rampant? San Fran. Yeah, I mean, like. All the major cities here in Atlanta. I mean, yeah, the homeless. The homeless. Why can't we feed some of these motherfuckers? Right, why don't we build housing? You know, I mean, there's so much that we could do 
for our own country, strengthening our own borders. We'd have 15 million people come across the border since Biden took office. You know, whether you like Biden or not, that's just the way it is, right? So a lot of people are for open borders. I mean, just saying, we've got our own set of shit. So anyway, you want me to play this? Yeah. Cyber attacks on public infrastructure threaten the institution. Oh, just fucked it all up. That's a great story, Ben. And so that's the type of hard-hitting journalism you get here at Man Fused. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this is a Man Fused Productions podcast. <laughs> So breaking right now, Vladimir Putin now meeting with the heads of Russian security services after speaking to the people of Russia about the uprising that occurred over the weekend. Senior Foreign Affairs correspondent Greg Palcott live from Kiev with the breakdown of what Vladimir Putin just said to the Russian people. Hi, Greg. Hey, Martha. Yeah, remarkable stuff. Uh, we'll give you the breakdown and uh, really the breaking up of uh, society is what uh, Vladimir Putin talked about. And he claimed that he had avoided it. Just let's just step back just for one moment here. Remind our, our viewers what happened over the weekend. The Wagner mercenary group head by Evgeny Bogosian uh, left Ukraine, went into Russia, took over a big city there, then went up to Moscow, got within about 120 miles of it, turned around when they said, said there was yeah. Deal nah. and actually withdrew. We heard earlier today, Martha, from Prigozhin, and he said in an audio message that, in fact, he wasn't trying to topple Putin, and he was <laughs> sorry about those 13 uh, Russian soldiers <laughs> that they killed, but he had a problem because he thought Putin was trying to get rid of his uh, force, and he also had a problem the way Putin was running this war. Well, that happened a couple hours ago, Martha, and, and Putin wasn't going to let that stand Putin. in a recorded message that ran on state TV, which we just saw a few moments ago, uh, Putin responded. Let me give you a rough paraphrase of a, <laughs> a key part of, part of this uh, message. He said, Get and off I'm my quoting lawn. here, from the very beginning of the events, all necessary decisions were immediately taken to neutralize the threat, to protect the constitutional order, life and safety of our citizens. An armed rebellion would have been suppressed in any case. He went on to say, the organizers of the rebellion, betraying their country, their people, betrayed those who were dragged into the crime. They lied to them, pushed them to death, under fire, to shoot at their own. It was this outcome fratricidal that Russia's enemies wanted. So basically, Martha, uh, Putin is raising the specter like of word. civil war in his country. And he friendly is claiming fire. that he's huh. the one that avoided the fire. civil war, Fine. headed that off. Uh, he was a little bit uh, vague about the future of the Wagner force. He said they could either sign up with the uh, uh, Russian military or go to neighboring Belarus. Remember, in that deal that ended this all on Saturday, supposedly Prigozhin, the leader, would go to Belarus. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. unclear clear exactly uh, whether he's going to go because Prigozhin didn't say where he was going to go. So it, it seems like uh, number one. boring me. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. That guy doesn't know anything about the economy of Who words. <laughs> Point being, you know, why is this our fucking problem? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't fucking know. I mean, to me, it's a distraction. Yeah, there is. Hey, as always, we thank you for listening to the Manfuse podcast. Please join the show by hitting us up, manfuse.com, 770-744-5227.